Hi, Lance Goyke and Jay Chung here at IFAST University, and today we're going to talk about some people who have no idea where their body is in space. And I'm sure you've had clients like this. I have many clients like this. Um, <laughs> and they're sometimes a little bit frustrating to deal with because you might give them a cue and they might not be able to do what they're trying. They you want them to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, you might teach them one exercise and they might not know what that exercise looks like. Um, or they like week after week after week yeah. and I'm okay with that because I call that job security right <laughs> so I'm totally fine with teaching them the same exercise over and over but it is a little bit frustrating it's not like working with a high-powered athlete or someone who's more aware of their body and sometimes you have to use certain tactics to get them to do what you want them to do yeah, sure. so let's talk about a few examples um, and then we'll talk about how you can deal with some of these clients more effectively so first, I want to tell you about a client I had several years ago who I was trying to teach a very simple warm-up exercise, and it went something like this. So, hi Lance, I'm going to teach you this exercise, and it kind of looks like this, right? So I lay down on the floor, and I put my leg on this foam roller, and then I went into this position and I showed her like three reps of a mobilization exercise, right? or four or five reps. Sure. And I explained that. that I'm gonna put my top leg on this foam roller, I'm gonna have my bottom arm reaching up and my top arm reaching back, and I explained the whole thing, okay? And then I stood up and I said, now it's your turn. Um, so you're gonna be the, that client, right? You're gonna lie down on the ground, and she did something like this. She like lay down on her back, like nowhere near the foam roller, and then just like froze because she had no idea what to do. And then I was like, yeah, you're gonna roll over on your side and nothing happened. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, you're gonna roll, you're gonna roll over on, on this side and you're gonna put your top leg on the foam roller and nothing happened. So eventually what I had to do is I had to like take this leg, put it on the foam roller. I had to take this leg, pull it straighter. I had to take this arm and put it where I wanted it. And yeah, you can stand it. But, I mean, it was just like, I had, I had no idea what was going on, right? And I would be so lost. Yeah, yeah, I was kind of lost too. Yeah, it was a little <laughs> uncomfortable because it's like saying to someone, hey, have a seat in that chair, and they just stare at you. So they're, they don't know what to do because the words that are coming into their, ma into their ear um, and the processing power and then the visualization of what they're supposed to do is just not clicking for them. So they just froze. Um, second example is my own mother. And I love her to death, but she's a little bit athletically challenged. Okay. <laughs> so we were actually in this room. She was having a visit with Bill. And we were trying to get her to go from this posture to this posture. Okay. And Bill was like talking her through it, talking her through it, and, and she just was not getting it. Yeah. So eventually I kind of tried to jump in and I like talked to her in Korean. I stood up and I demonstrated it with, for her. And here is literally, here's what happened. I said, mom, you're, gonna, you're, you're like this. I want you to do this. And she went from this to this, okay? <laughs> so she did the exact opposite of what we wanted her to do. And eventually I took her like this. I, like, I was like here and I was over here. So I'm like, okay, you're gonna do this and nothing happened. Okay? <laughs> it was like, it was like, my mom's not a super strong human being. Like she's kind of small and, yeah. and uh, slender. You've got a little bit of that. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and like nothing, like it was like, it was like touching a rock. That was just like so yeah. solidly stuck. Yeah. Um, so that it's a little bit frustrating, right? Um, third example is someone. Uh, I think I think you know who I'm talking about. It's a client whose name rhymes with Bina. Okay. <laughs> so she'll do an exercise, and if I give her even one cue or even not and no cues at all, here's how she'll do like a row. So I'm like, okay. Here's how we're gonna do the row. You reach long and you squeeze back. You reach long and you squeeze back. And I gave her two directions, right? I didn't overcomplicate the exercise. But when she goes to do the exercise, she does it like this. <laughs> and that's about the speed at which she does it. I'm not really exaggerating that much. Painful. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, okay, but I have my own example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have this your own person clients. moves twice as slow. Actually. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I a guy. I yeah, 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 yeah. 
Um, so I call these people people who are diffusing bombs, right? They're not actually exercising, they're diffusing bombs because they're trying to move so carefully and do everything perfectly. And they're, they're so afraid of moving incorrectly. And when you try to give them a cue, sometimes it makes them even worse. They slow down even more. Mm -hmm. So in dealing with these people, I have a few tips. Um, one is to remember that some of these people, most of them are probably highly intelligent in other ways. And when you see them being so incompetent at one thing like movement quality or just being aware of their body, sure. it's really easy for us to associate that with um, just thinking that they're incompetent at everything. And I can't tell you how many lawyers, doctors, you know, highly successful pro professionals. You know, my mom is a PhD. I have PhDs and all sorts of very intelligent, successful people um, who are out there, but they come in here and they can't do anything right. And it's really easy for us to think, man, these people are just, they just, they're just dumb and they suck. <laughs> Right, I've totally done that. Yeah, yeah, and and so for oh, me, man, in, you know, for me, for example, it's like um, I've been to Korea, and my Korean's okay, but kind of not. It sounds like a five-year-old's Korean and not like a thirty-five-year-old's <laughs> Korean, and so people think I'm stupid, right? And that's a really disorienting experience to have, and so just to be aware of that, that that they may be good at other things that you are not aware of, um, so don't pigeonhole them and unfairly think that they're dumb because yeah. they can't do this thing that you happen to be good at. Second, you may have to um, explicitly tell them that you don't want them to overthink things. So my clients who are diffusing bombs, I explicitly tell them, hey, you're diffusing bombs. I want you to take a walk in the park instead and just um, allow them to coast through an exercise and maybe do it a little bit incorrectly, but just to relax, yeah. right? So even if their shoulder shrugs a little bit, I might let that go. Uh, whatever it is, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, just yeah. I let it, I let it go, so that they can relax instead of trying to do everything perfect. Um, and sometimes what I'll do when I cue them is I'll take them out of the rack or off the machine. Mm -hmm. So if if you're here on this machine or if you're here on the station or doing a deadlift on the platform. I'll take you off of the platform over here and I'll coach you over here so that I separate the explanation space from the performance space. It just makes them a little bit more relaxed when they're over here, right? So this is the non-cognitive performance. This is the cognitive explanation understanding space. Um, and wow. third, yeah. So Rufus, Grant Gardas, one of our like Olympic lifting coaches, I guess. Um, good friend. Uh, he does the same kind of thing. And yeah. He doesn't necessarily. I mean, I've heard him say, "I don't want you to be afraid to make a mistake." Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he'll like, he, like he mostly works with kids, and he'll yell at them. And yeah. He'll yeah. be like, "No, dummy! <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. Um, calm down. Don't don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm here. You stop thinking. You just do it. Yeah. I'm here to be the coach. Yeah. If I need to say something, I'll say something. But you exactly. don't think about it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and I'll make a joke about that too with my clients is they'll be like, am I doing this right? Am I doing this right? And I'll say, you're doing it great. If you were doing something wrong, I'd be yelling at you. <laughs> you know? and I, perfect. Yeah, so it just diffuses the situation yeah. for them so that they don't turn into bomb diffusers. Yeah. And the third thing I want people to be aware of is that sometimes with these clients, tactile cues are your friend. So I don't want to explain things and then have them try to understand what my words are in their brain and then translate to what they think it should be. I just, I'll, I'll put them there or um, when they're doing the exercise, I'll put my hand where I need to in order to get, to get them to feel, hey, I want you to reach longer. I want you to touch me right here or I want you to do this or whatever. I'll, I'll be very hands-on with these people so that you remove the cognitive aspect as much as you can. That... I, I, whatever it is about interpreting the language and then bringing it into some sort of movement for mm -hmm, those mm -hmm, people, mm -hmm. it just seems like it never works. Yeah, it's just too much cognitive load yeah. because they're already concentrating too much with things that are outside of their ability at the yeah, moment. Yeah. Um, so let me do a little demonstration with you. Okay. 
So, um, you know, you are someone who I would say is very aware of your body, right? You could say that. Yeah, you're not you're not necessarily the greatest athlete in the world, but you're very aware of your the feelings that you get from different parts of your body. Sure. Um, and you are very good at seeing movement and diagnosing movement and giving people suggestions on how to improve their movement. But let's take a, a context in which you're not so familiar, right? So let's, let me show you a simple martial arts drill. So this is like the first set of movements I ever learned when I like walked into the Hapkido club at Indiana University, I don't know, 12 years ago or something like that, right? So it would be like, you're gonna strike me with this arm like this, okay? And I'm gonna block you here, and then I'm gonna pass it, and then I'm gonna trap your arm over here. Okay. Okay. So you're gonna strike. I'm gonna block, pass, push. Okay. One more. Strike. I block, pass, and push. All right. Okay. So you got three demonstrations of okay. that. Okay. Now I'm gonna swing at you, and you're gonna do the same thing. Let's see if you can do it. Ready? <laughs> Which arm are you gonna? I don't care. I'll <laughs> okay. okay. Ready? Block. Push. Not even close. What? <laughs> <laughs> Right, and so I, I just want to make a point yeah. that that you're very highly aware. You see movement every day; it's your job. And yet, when I asked you to do this, you 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 know, my hand was supinated, my arm was externally rotated, yours was internally rotated. Just little little things like that. And so, um, just to have a little patience with your clients who are struggling, because even though this is stuff like when we do a deadlift or a row or a push up, we've done that for thousands and no, thousands of reps. Yeah, and so. It's easy for us to forget what that feels like for someone who's doing their first row or doing their first RDL in the way that you want them to do it. It's so hard for them, and they're thinking about so many different things um, that you know. It, if you do an exercise like this, and you understand that how difficult it is to see something in a different context, you'll have a little, a little more patience. Um, or one thing that you might do is, is if you're right-handed, for example, throw a ball with your left hand. Or, or oh, think man. about what yeah. it would be like to, yeah. to teach someone to throw a ball. It's humbling. With their <laughs> it's so humbling, right? Yeah. Or write something with your offhand, right? Jeez. Um, and so just little exercises like that can help you stay a little more empathetic to your beginning clients and to your uh, clients who are struggling.